automation by itself is not good or bad. It is like a knife or high explosive. It can be used to advance the well-being of people. Then it is good. Or it can be used to produce dark, hopeless tragedy, and then it is evil. But the question is, how do you tame automation? How do you make it serve people? The UAW says when men or women are laid off because of automation, when the plant moves, people should be given new jobs. If there are not new jobs, they should be given moving allowances to places where there are jobs. If they need training, they should get training. If they have to be re-educated for new jobs, then they should get the education and allowances to live on in the in-between times. This is a factory where robots make robots. Japan's Panic Limited near Mount Fuji. It's late afternoon here. But where have all the people gone? They've gone home. The factory continues to produce, but without people. It's Kurt Vonnegut's apocalyptic vision in player piano. Machines doing most of the work, very few people. The robots are coming, the robots are coming, not only in Japan, but on assembly lines all over the United States. And the automation, and the computers, and the dream of a world of tomorrow. But along with the dream, there is a nightmare. The blue-collar blues. The factories closed, jobs lost, new skills needed, a revolution in more than name, as in the Industrial Revolution, politics, economy, society forever altered, for good or bad. The Great Lakes states alone have lost almost two million factory jobs in the last decade. The obsolete steel mills are tumbling down tumbling down on whole communities. Fifteen hundred steelworker jobs were lost when U.S. Steel's Ambridge, Pennsylvania plant closed in April of 1984. From Roosevelt's days when he went to power, labor, and the cost of living, everything went up beautifully. A man could live and raise a family and buy a car and buy a home. This is the first generation we're going backwards. If you're over the age of 50, if you're over the age of 40, and you go to get a job, and they'll tell you you're too old to hire, and you're too young to retire. There isn't anybody who could ever point to one of our robots and say, that machine took my job, because the, that machine didn't. We've always gone to our customers and said, please, upgrade the individual. What in the world are we going to retrain for? I can't imagine. We can't all be computer operators. What are you going to compute? Well, my experience is that this type of technology doesn't liberate people at all, that in fact the reverse is the case. It controls the whole environment in which they work and operate. In the field of white collar work, for example, there are computer aided design systems for architects, where the architects can no longer think of all the type of architectural elements they might use, but where they're confronted almost like children with a Lego set, they can make a pleasing pattern out of a few little elements but they can't change the elements because they're said to have been optimized. I think the whole history of automation shows clearly that you can remove routine work and at the same time make the, the job that remains far more monotonous and far less interesting than the job that went before. It seems to me that the jobs that remain, whether in the white collar or in the manual field, will be de-skilled. There'd be jobs in which the worker, whether by hand or by brain, is controlled by the machine rather than the other way around. We want to keep our factories here. We want to keep our manufacturing here. We don't want them moving to China, to Mexico, to Japan, to India, to Vietnam. But it turns out most of the job loss isn't because of offshoring. There's been offshoring, and I think offshoring is, is responsible for maybe 20% of the jobs that have been lost. I would say most of the jobs that have been lost, despite what most Americans think was due to automation or productivity growth. He says that automation has been a mostly silent job killer, lowering the standard of living. So for the last 15 years, the standard of living has dropped by 15, 10 to 15%. Uh, so that's unusual in a developed world. A one-year decline is a recession. A 15-year decline gives an entirely different sense about the prospects of a community. 
And so that is common from the Canadian border to the Gulf of Mexico in the middle swath of the United States. Gentlemen, ladies, the future is now. To bring goods to an exploding global economy and to deliver those goods faster, cheaper, and safer, modern robotics do much of the work in the world's largest seaport, Rotterdam. Moving cargo is a traditional strength of the Dutch, who shuttle more freight in fewer man hours than any port in the world. And now, the Dutch have modeled the future of cargo management. Completely containerized cargo arrives into parts on ships a third of a mile long, 24 hours a day, with short turnaround. Smart card technology provides greater security and improved accountability, with no need for unreliable human surveillance. Germany is already a global leader when it comes to the number of industrial robots in operation. Only South Korea and Japan have more automated production than Germany. The Schunk company is already working on the next generation of industrial robots. The machines are meant to increase productivity, of course, but they're not intended to replace people. Intelligent robots are designed to work independently, side by side with their human counterparts. Global positioning systems guide each container to its proper spot on board or on the docks, while state-of-the-art computers track shipments in every part. Some of the systems you're seeing have already been upgraded. Rotterdam now works 350 million tons of cargo annually, leaving Singapore a distant second. What kind of man hours are the steam doors clocking over there? You know, um, I don't have those figures handy, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, Rotterdam does employ 4,000 people. 4,000 people to move 350 million tons a year? That's right. That's efficiency, man. By eliminating some of the more dangerous work, the uh, Rotterdam technologies have reduced employee work-related accidents and injuries by 60%. I think we can all be pretty happy with that, can't we? Question? Yes? Yeah, the GPS readings, are they exactly Can't get hurt if you ain't working, you know, right? 20 foot containers. No, no, they... One way or another, automation is here to stay. Whether it will cost jobs or create them remains to be seen. I'm talking history, right? I'm talking now. Because down here it's still, who's your old man until you got kids your own? Then it's, who's your son? But after the horror movie I seen today, robots. Piers full of robots. My kid will be lucky if he's even punching numbers five years from now. And while it don't mean shit to me, I can't take my steak knives to Dibiago and Sons. It breaks my fucking There's no future for the Sabatas on the waterfront. That will be invented like no other. When the Terminator hit the big screen almost three decades ago, it was just science fiction and too far into the future to even imagine. But in 2021, robots are now widely used. The cost effectiveness of them means they already have and will replace humans in many jobs. The McKinsey Global Institute report is predicting up to 800 million jobs could be taken by robots within just nine years. In terms of the displacement effect on jobs, we found that an additional robot installed in a lower income area would have twice the displacing, twice the impact on jobs uh, as it would in a higher income area. And Another major concern is that AI can exacerbate biases in society, worsening gender and racial disparities in education, employment and society in general. It's crucial to establish ethical standards and policies, encoding algorithms and promote inclusiveness. The digital divide should also be addressed to make sure that entire groups of people aren't left behind. We've got something to worry about, which is, of course, that many jobs are disappearing, and in the short term, that creates dislocations. There are many people who are rightly worried about their jobs, but... The impact in society could be mass unemployment, and that concerns me a lot, because we're really not sure what to do about that. Public trust is absolutely essential to the development and, and health of robotics industry. And so we should take things a little slowly and make sure everything works properly so that the public will trust the machines. Not an opinion is that if it's used uh, carefully, it could work. A, a robot doesn't get bored. A robot is, for someone with Alzheimer's, you're endlessly repeating reassuring information. A robot can do that without getting frustrated. Also, a robot not, doesn't need to sleep. 
Um, but at the same time, it's not a human being, it's not tactile, it doesn't have the intuition that we have. Robo Thespian, what is it like working with actual human beings? Humans have very small brains and are quite unreliable, which can be frustrating. But the humans I work with are very nice, and I've become fond of them despite their limitations. Radical idea, taxing robots. Bill Gates first suggested it earlier this year, and now a big California city is taking it one step further. Aditi Roy is in Cupertino, California. If robots like Butler are hurting the U.S. economy by taking jobs away from humans. If we don't prepare now, and if we don't support the automation that's going to happen, I think that it could potentially be an incredible disaster um, with 37 to 47 uh, percent of jobs that currently exist displaced by robots. Jane Kim is a supervisor in San Francisco. She's worried about robots and automation displacing workers and wants to do something about it. Inspired by Bill Gates' endorsement of a robot tax in an interview with Quartz magazine earlier this year, Kim has created a committee to explore the idea. If a robo tax is implemented, robots could be taxed just like people are. Business owners who use them would pay income tax, even Social Security. Eventually, Kim hopes to have a ballot initiative for California voters or a bill for legislators to decide upon. I believe it's going to be a portfolio of policies that are going to help us prepare our workers for the future of work. It's a subject that's sparking increasing controversy as more and more robots do things that people do in factories, research labs. Some are even making pizza. One recent report from Forrester found that automation will lead to a net loss of nearly 10 million jobs in the U.S. by 2027. But Motor Company has announced its plans to cut 1,400 jobs nationwide. According to the Detroit Free Press, all U.S. employees were alerted this morning. The cuts affect salaried employees. Ford is offering a voluntary buyout program for eligible workers to meet its 1,400 target. The cuts are part of a multi-billion dollar restructuring effort by the automaker. Our news partners at the Austin Business Journal report that Dell Technologies in Round Rock is preparing employees for layoffs. The ABJ reports that Dell notified employees during a quarterly meeting yesterday and that the layoffs will happen this week. According to Bloomberg, Dell's COO says the cuts are not focused on a particular team or a division, but instead parts of the company's general reconstruction. It is not clear how many jobs at Dell will be cut. Bad news for workers at the happiest place on earth. Disney Company is cutting 4,000 more jobs in 2021. That brings the total number of layoffs to 32,000. Due to of cuts, mostly affects workers at Disney parks in California and Florida. The company has taken an estimated loss of nearly $7.5 billion. Since Raytheon Technology says it plans to eliminate more than 15,000 jobs this year. That's nearly double what the company predicted in July. It comes as the airline industry struggles amid the pandemic. will come from Raytheon's corporate offices. It's Pratt and Whitney Division in Connecticut and the Collins Aerospace Division in North Carolina. Challenge that we as a society have to look at and address. We have to work out how we retrain people, how we provide people with the skills to survive in the new future. So far, the only careers that we're certain are safe from robots are robot builders. Computers will overhaul our economies or will destroy our future. It remains to be seen who will win, man or machine. Martin. People back to work the jobs that they've had, that their fathers had, their grandfathers had. And these kids coming out of high school this summer, where are they going to go? They can't all fit in McDonald's and uh, Burger King. We, we was expecting to leave these jobs to these kids. This feeling that, well, so what? We'll become a service industry. That'll never work. Not, uh, unless we all want to lower our standard of living and be a service nation. Uh, you can't just have video arcades and, uh, and uh, drive-in banks and hamburger joints. Who's going to come up with the money to go play the games or eat the hamburgers? There isn't be any job cuts. Uh, there won't be any asset sales. Uh, there won't be anything like that to fund our plan, unlike the LNP, who have $23 billion in unfunded promises. And central Queensland knows uh, what happens when the LNP gets, to, gets into power. 400 people were sacked from their jobs in central Queensland when Deb Freckington uh, and Campbell Newman had their hands on the levers of power. And that included health workers, including nurses and midwives, all across central Queensland. 
and we can't afford that. Queensland can't afford that because that would be an anvil of austerity dropped on Queensland and dropped on central Queensland uh, and we don't want that at all. It is, it is not what we need right now. It is irresponsible. That again is only going to add to the debt that we need to keep a lid on. We should be investing in our people, investing in their skills, investing in their ability to then go into high wage, jo high what, wage what's jobs. Idea? What's your idea very quickly? Invest in our people. Make Invest apprenticeships free. Make vocational training free. Get them into vocational jobs that grow the economy. Mr. President, thousands of jobs are lost every week to automation. The federal government is one of the leaders in automation. Do you think it is good for us as human beings to dehumanize work and sacrifice people and machines and money? Well, I think it's all a question of uh, degree and uh, how it's done. Obviously, all, most of the companies we now enjoy are the result of the automation technology over a period of 100, 150 years. And uh, there was historically efforts at various times to stop uh, the introduction of machines, which uh, made the labor of men easier. So automation does not need to be, as we hope, our, our enemy. Now, what is of concern now is this combination of a rather intensive uh, period of automation, plus the fact that our education system is not keeping up. So that we have a graduating and dropping out of high school so many millions of young men and women who aren't able to uh, operate in this new society who have only physical labor to perform and they can't find enough jobs and uh, so that, uh, that's what concerns us. Now as you know we're retraining, job retraining is important in that area, vocational training, trying to uh, combat school dropouts, trying to urge families to keep their children in school, all the rest of these efforts with which you are familiar. The, uh, we have a proposal before the Congress for a new analysis of automation. In answer to your question, I think machines can make life easier for men if men do not let the machines uh, dominate them. And I've got a fear. I've got a fear. I've got a fear of robots, transformers, and cobots. A medically proven fear. The robots don't want us here. The T-1000. Said to destroy our past Number five was friendly But it was too good to last Harassed by a Cylon Dressed up in nylon I almost grabbed my pants When his red eye Shot me a lance Let about sink that high Standing in the idiot box Number one in prime time Where do we draw the line? Sick of all these robots Getting in my face Sick of all these robots Getting in my face I've got a fear of robots Do you feel them too? I've got a fear of robots They're coming after you I've got a fear of robots Do you feel them too? I've got a fear of robots They're coming after you I've got a fear of robots I know they'll do me in Hallie's not your pal So don't you listen to him They program the matrix to keep us all in line Copper top batteries Until the end of time I'm sick of all these robots Committing all their crimes Charging high television Robbing us blind Flesh covered metal Cyborgs giving the most Punk ass Terminator Trying to make me toast The cyborg wants to know Why we humans cry Don't answer his questions only tell him lies I've got a fear of robots Do you feel them too? I've got a fear of robots They're coming after you I've got a fear of robots Do you feel them too? I've got a fear of robots They're coming after you Huh, small wonder No wonder they're taking over there's no intelligence and artificial intelligence. Oh yeah. Some people fear heights. Some people fear.
hear mice, I get tired and knocked When I see the robots, I'm gonna feel robots! Yeah.